All right, Casey, can you uh, can you hear me? I think you're there in the Phoenix office. Is that right? Yes, I am. Awesome, awesome. Thanks for hopping on. And uh, I know, I know, you know, it's tell us a little bit about you know what you were doing before Family First Life. Obviously, we all have, Zach and I are over here speaking at at two point five x on Apple Podcast <laughs> speed. Um, that's just that's how we go. But tell us a little bit about, you know, where you're from, how long you've been working with FFL and uh, how long you've been working with FFL. Everyone say what up to the man, the myth, the legend of, of the whole company, Mr. Andrew Taylor. Hi, <laughs> hey, Andrew. How you doing? <laughs> so, Casey, tell us a little bit about your background and we'll hop right into some training. Okay, awesome. So um, I actually just graduated college in 2019. So I was a college athlete for... Um, all four years in college. And then once I got out of college, I was working as a marketing and business development coordinator at a small traffic engineering firm. And that was basically just through networking with people on my team. And, uh, you know, it was like my, my friend's boyfriend's mom was starting the company. So I went ahead and did that for a couple months. And then she actually looked at me and she was like, do you want to do this? Like, is this what you enjoy doing? And I was like, so if you're asking me honestly, no, <laughs> I was like, I don't super love doing this. So um, then honestly, all throughout 2020, um, obviously COVID hit everybody in a different way. So I had stopped working there at the beginning of 2020 and I was interviewing for jobs as much as I could left and right. Um, I wanted to be an event planner. So, but you know, with COVID, you can't be around people. So that's like non-existent. So basically I was trying to get anywhere that I could. And then back in August of 2020, I had Nina um, reach out to me over LinkedIn and asking, Hey, have you ever thought about getting your insurance license? And in the back of my brain, I was like, absolutely not. No, <laughs> I was like, no. And then I just like looked at the video and the opportunity and my dad's a big business guy. So I sent it over to him and I was like, what do you think? And he was like, I think you should go for it. So then I started studying to get my license, had to take it really quick and was really nervous. Um, and then passed, got contracted and I've been doing this for a little over 90 days. Okay. So 90 days in a uh, former college athlete. I know the thing about people that come from the fitness industry and people who are athletes, right? There's a, there's a level of pushing through things when you don't want to, right? So yeah. being only 90 days in, can you tell us a little bit about, you know, has it been, you know, what type of leads you're working, mm -hmm. how much you've submitted so far in your 90 days mm -hmm. and what's been your, what's been your biggest challenge? Uh, so the leads that I'm working, they have changed and rearranged. Obviously when I came into the business, I was like, okay, I kind of got to find my groove. So I was running final expense with a mix of CRM. Cause honestly, I didn't even have my CRM login yet. I just had someone helping me sort through the leads. So I started out with final expense, saw success with that, like within my first day. I don't know how I did it, but I sold my very first policy that I sat. And I was like, what is happening? <laughs> I was like, what is going on? Sweet Christopher Bradley. Anyway, he bought for me. Um, but so I was running that. And now, honestly, I am running all CRM. Um, so that's instance, any like three month olds. And that's when I've submitted my biggest numbers. Um, so as far as total submit for the last 90 days, I have no idea. So can you tell us what you're, so you're, you're working the CRM. Is that because you just love those leads so much? Or is that because they're more affordable? Cause obviously there, you got to find that correlation of quality and, and price, right? So tell us what your favorite lead type to work is. I would say sometimes, you know, it depends on the area that you're in too, but I know instance, um, they, can be amazing of what people say of their requesting insurance in general. So it could be a funeral final expense or you walk in and it's like a truck driver that makes 20 grand a month and is looking for mortgage protection. That just happened to me last weekend. And I was like, I had no idea what I was walking into. I mean, they're a little bit older, but then that was, it was just a totally different appointment. So I appreciate instance for that reason, because you have, you don't know what you're walking into in the best way possible. And then I also do like three month olds because they have not been called in a while. So approaching them, they were probably blown up a month or two ago. And now it's like a lot less than, so they're cheaper leads, but you call them and you're like, Hey, our office has been backed up and you go right back into the rest of your script. And sometimes we are like, Oh, all right. Yeah, that makes sense. And I've definitely sold policies off of that. So um, those are, those are some of my favorite. And then when you can get your hands on any mailers, because people actually hand wrote that, that's a game changer too. 
I muted myself. Um, <laughs> so anytime if, 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 if for you new agents, if you're getting your teeth kicked in for an hour straight or two hours straight and you feel like you're working, just, just, just switch it up. You can't be, a, you can't be afraid to say the wrong thing to the right person. So just switch it up. So how, um, being here three months, you know, I know I was here for a year, you know, and I was still learning the underwriting. I would just, I only had Americo and AIG for a year and a half, right? So I, I, how, how do you know the underwriting so well um, from like your in-home? How do you know what product to go with? Because you are so new, right? So how do you know what product to go with? So typically, you know, especially for starting out, a lot of new agents, including myself, were like, I need to know what these products, like what these products are. I have no idea what to write people, but people would always say, call your quote unquote, I know we don't like the word upline, but call your upline, the person that's going to help you in the home. Yeah, also, call your manager. Yeah, sometimes. Because it like, might be, when, I, when we say upline, like the person who brought you in doesn't have to be your manager. If I got hired by Joe Schmo, I'm not calling them. I'm calling Grady or I'm calling Nina or I'm calling Hayden or I'm calling Casey or Gage. Right. So call your manager in the home is what she means. Right. And also don't be, especially if you're a new agent, do not be afraid to do that because I, I was like willing and ready to do it. You may think you don't look like you know what you're talking about, but it's all very assumptive, all, all very confident. And now I say in the home, I'm like, hey, I'm going to give my senior field underwriter a call just to double check. I'm, I already know the underwriting, so I'm pretty sure I know what you'll qualify for. So to answer your question, it really all just came. I still honestly don't know everything, so I still will call in the home, um, but I have a pretty good idea after listening to medications. I And so as I'm talking to someone on the phone, I'm like, hey, okay, um, they're 63, you know, it's a male. I'm going through all of the detailed parts so that way I have a good understanding. And sometimes I ask follow-up questions. Um, and I'm like, so with COPD, would this like go through? Cause now I'm kind of putting the client in a situation where I'm like, you're understanding that you have different things that won't let you qualify. So I'm like putting them in a tighter and tighter spot of like, I, I have options for you. Maybe like, we're going to see what we can get you qualified for. So it's like Grady, you understand that you have COPD high blood pressure, like, dude, it's, I, I'm going to do my best to get you coverage. But right. you know, most people would just tell you to walk out. Good thing. I'm a broker. I'm going to do my best to get you protected. Right? right. So that's huge. Um, digging in deeper, right. Digging in deeper to people's health, digging in deeper to people's why, what would you say now? Okay. So, so three months in you're transitioning into a new career. There's no way, you know, I mean, we're all learning. We could be in year seven and we are still learning, right? Leadership right. is a commitment to lifelong learning. Right. So um, for you, what would you say? What, what is that? What would you say to a, a, a college athlete, someone who's coming out of college right now, a college athlete, male or female, uh, maybe someone who is out of college, maybe, maybe they didn't get the degree they wanted. You know, I, I dropped out after a year. College wasn't for me. But what would you say to someone who's young, who is good with people, and they're looking for a place. How would you describe the support here? And how would you describe the training to them? So I would basically describe, first of all, you know, I know if you're a college athlete or there's something, especially athletes, you've been committed to your craft for years before even college athletics. You wouldn't have been able to get on a college athletic team if you had not practiced years prior. So for me, like going into that with them, how I would, you know, basically approach that is like, you've been dedicated, you know what dedication and discipline looks like for very long standpoints of time, pushing past what you're uncomfortable, you're used to critiques, you're used to re, um, revamping yourself all the time. So I would then go into like how the training and the support is like, it's just like a team here. Brandon, you are building your own business. You don't have anyone telling you what to do, but you know how to be self-sufficient. You've done it all throughout athletics. You've done it all throughout your life. And if it is not someone from athletics and, you know, they did drop out of college or whatever, granted, chances are they, there was something else they were looking for that's bigger than what college like didn't offer them. So again, I would just go back to like training here will teach you everyone here. I have, I audio messaged Zach Tordowski the other day and he, I had never talked to him <laughs> and I was like, Hey, I have a question. Cause I was getting beat up on the phone. So I was like, all right, I keep on hearing. I'm not, you know, I'm not interested. And I was like, okay, I, I have got to say something different. So then I audio messaged him. He does not know who I am at that point. And I was like, hey, like, this is my name. And he was so willing to help me out. He's so much further along than me. But that's what I would explain to other people is everybody here, if you're willing to be incredibly coachable and ask a lot of questions, 
and realize you don't know a lot, then you will get better. It will happen. So that's how I would approach that. So we want to hear what we want to hear and what everyone to hear is we want to hear two or three minutes of your phone script. We want to hear how it's not about, because I, I, I've heard you dial, right? It's not about what works for their schedule, but how we clear the calendar and how we do that. So what type of, we're going to book a quick appointment. What type of lead do you want to book? Um, let's do an instant. Perfect. Um, you can, whenever you're ready. All right. Okay. Ring, ring. Uh, hello. Jordan. Yeah. Jordan, this is Casey Trout. Um, I was just giving you a quick call back about that form that you had filled out for the Arizona State Regulated Life Insurance Programs. Now, I just wanted to call and introduce myself because I'm the medical underwriter that got assigned to your file. So I just need to verify that I'm speaking to the correct person. I got you down at 1688 South North Star Lane in Phoenix. Is that correct? Yep, that's me. Okay, and then I got your date of birth is 1208-1954. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right. And Jordan, when you originally filled this out, were you looking for coverage for just you or your spouse as well? Uh, just me. Just you. Okay. And I don't really think I see it on here, but are you currently single, married, widow, divorced? Uh, I'm single. My wife passed away. So I guess I'm widowed. Okay. Okay. Well, I'll make a note of that. So the good thing about these programs, Jordan, is they're all non-medical. So basically what that means for you is no nurse and no doctor has to come out to take any blood or any urine samples or anything crazy like that. Okay. So instead they actually do have me dispatched out in your area tomorrow and Saturday, just to sit with you for about 10 minutes, make sure that one, nobody's trying to get insurance in your name and that you are who you say you are. And two, uh, that you're, you're decently healthy and you're not strapped to a hospital bed full time. Does that make sense? It does. Okay. Awesome. Now, Jordan, are you working or are you retired? I'm retired. Okay. You're retired. All right. So over the next two days, do you have any doctor's appointments? No doctor's appointments, but I do help out at my HOA. I'm the handyman. Okay. Awesome. So is there typically uh, a time that you're in the door from doing that? Do you do it every day or what does that look like? It's not every day. It's just when something fix something needs fixed. I'm um, who they call at the, at the park. Okay. So like I said, I will be in your area tomorrow and Saturday. So um, are you more of like, do you typically help out in the morning? Or are you helping them out tomorrow? Uh, only if something breaks. Okay. Okay. So um, scheduled. Okay. So are you more of like a morning or an afternoon person? Oh yeah. I wake up at four. Okay. So you're, you're more morning. So good thing for you. I do get booked up pretty quickly, but I do have an 8 a.m. or a 9 a.m. available just to drop by for about 10 minutes, which would work better for you. Oh, okay. Uh, well, well, can, what's this for? What's this for again? So this is for the Arizona state regulated life insurance programs. And I'm just the medical underwriter assigned to get the info out to you. Um, it's just to be able to drop it off to you. So like I said, I do have an eight or a 9am, but I get booked up pretty quickly. So which one would be better for you? I'll give me the eight. Okay. All right. Um, so Jordan, if you can grab a pen and a piece of paper for me, I'm going to give you my name and my state license number that I'll verify with you at the door when I see you. So you, you just let me know when you're ready. I'm ready. Okay. So again, my name is Casey Trout and it's spelled C-A-S-E-Y. And last name is spelled T-R-A-U-T. And I'm also going to have you write down our appointment date and time. So it's Friday, March 29th at 8 a.m. And I'll give you my we're state good, license. When I'm ready. Cool. Awesome. Okay. Everyone drop a hand emoji for um, main thing that I heard from that, that I heard from you is your, your tempo, right? Your tempo, uh, your, your cool, your calm. Are, do you have your script in front of you right now? No. Awesome. So you're just, you're just, so you've just done enough dials. So I'm assuming, I'm assuming, I'm assuming, right? So this is where the assumptive sale, what Zach was talking about with all of us is this is where the assumptive sale starts. I'm assuming you remember these are all med these are all non-medical cases. First come come out to you and prick you with any needles, take your blood. Good news is you just have to see me. I'll verify you are who you say you are and that there's, you know, no one, you know, getting insurance in your name or you're not using a ventilator. That's not you, right? No, that's not me. I'm healthy as a right. horse. Perfect. So yeah. when you say, I'm assuming, I'm assuming, I'm assuming that's that, that's that, um, 
you know, that's that structure. So any, any Caseyisms you want to leave us with anything you say in the home, anything you learned this week that you've been using, um, give us one or two tips for the, for the crowd. And then we're going to get Jay will on here. Um, so I would say the biggest thing, and people have already said that, that I've really tried to lean in on is like, actually be genuine and find the need, not your need, their need. We know your need is to make money. We understand that. But for them, like they have a need, they are asking you to come like genuinely listen to what they're saying. Like, you don't even have to think so hard about how am I going to overcome the objection? Think about what would naturally work in order to overcome whatever they're saying. So that's the biggest thing that I thought about was like actually genuinely listen to what they're looking for and apply that as much as you possibly can. Um, then the other thing that I started using this week, I would say was um, cementing more at the end. So I actually think I heard this from Hayden, but it was like, you know how obviously the leads get brought out to different people and depending on which that you're buying. And so I would say at the end, like, hey, you're probably going to get more phone calls with people trying to help you out. I'm sure you've already gotten some and they're all, most, all, they're always like, oh my gosh, so many. I'm like, okay, so this is to help out. I will be the person that you directly come to from here on out for this kind of stuff. So if someone gives you a call, they're trying to help out, just let them know that you really already got it taken care of and you can come to me with any questions, comments, concerns you may have. So I really cement them that I'm going to be there for them through the whole process. I love that. And you're really digging deep to their why, right? It's not a, sh it's not a shallow, what does this look like? It's a, what does this really look like for your legacy and your last name? And so I applaud you very much, Casey. I applaud your work ethic. I applaud your coachability and uh, no doubt we'll see you at the top. What's your goal for 2021? Oh, <laughs> it'd have to be hall of fame. All right. We'll see you in a red jacket. No doubt about it. Thank you for helping us out and joining us. Thanks, Jordan.